Howdy again, it's Mr. Pete, your YouTube shop teacher, and this is part two of a two-part build of this sky crane, I call it. Be sure and watch part one if you haven't seen it, and this device is going to be used to mount and uh, dismount heavy vices on my milling machine. I suppose it could also be used on a lathe to uh, remove chucks. So I pretty well have it fabricated as you can see in working condition. So in this part I plan on taking it apart, priming it, painting it red I believe, and showing you how I'm going to use it and mount it and talk a little bit more about the parts that you might need if you decide to build one in your shop. So let's get started. Okay, you can see how easy this thing is to disassemble. It just pulls off. Now, some people are going to recommend that this entire thing be greased, but then it's going to be messy all the time. I do not want that. I'll put a dab of grease up here. That's really all I need. I talked yesterday in the other video about thrust bearings and the fact that we do not need them. And then, of course, there's just two half inch bolts with three quarter heads and there's T-nuts down in the T-slots and that'll lift right off. This has already been cleaned up and is ready to prime. The other one, the other part I'll take apart and I have a little de-rusting to do on the boom. This clip should have been in part one but whenever I weld something and I want it to be perpendicular I've always for 45 years tended to use a piece of threaded rod like this, nuts and so on. I face the ends of this so they are perfectly square and draw down tight and it usually will hold although if you weld too much on one side she still could warp on you so you got to keep those welds even and I don't need a whole lot of weld on this. I'm only lifting 40 pounds, maybe 70. Now I'm no brilliant engineer, but one of my obsessions when making this was to keep the weight down, and I sure did the job. That's nine and a half pounds. Have that on there, and I have a total with the hook of 12 pounds. But of course, the paint's going to add a little bit of weight, albeit negligible. I think I'll go over the materials that you would need if you wanted to build this. Now, this part is 14 inches. The boom is 15 inches. And this upright part is 14 inches. Now, those are approximately the size pieces that I guesstimated and started with, just with a good educated guess. And remember that this tubing here is, I think I said that in the first one, one and five eighths OD. This is one and three eighths OD. Now granted it is tremendously hard to find tubing, my friend David gave this to me, that is a good fit without being sloppy. You'll never find pipe at the hardware store that has a good fit. So that's something you'll really have to search for should you want to do this or make bushings to uh, accommodate the, the different sizes. The boom is made of rectangular tubing. It's really a rather odd size when I uh, look at it. It's one and three eighths by I don't know where they get the seven hundred thousandths there and very thin walled. I got a bit of a burr there but it's a light gauge 70 thousandths thick but you can make that any thickness. You can make this out of solid bar stock it's just that that increases the weight. Every last bit of material that I've used here I had in stock laying around the shop including the fasteners with the exception of course of these two pieces of tubing and everything else was around here including the jack. I told you I paid three or four dollars at a garage sale ten years ago for that. I had the chain, I had the hook, I even had the paint. I'm a little ashamed of uh, the origin of this jack but it's gonna have to uh, work. Now I do have to buy 
several lock, lock nuts because I'm using some fine threads in a few places. I'm using fine threads only because they're grade 5 or grade 8 bolts for a little bit of extra strength. I'm going to paint it with the uh, 2X Ultra Cover primer. Then I was going to use orange paint. I love this color and I have two cans of it, but boy does it clash with the red, doesn't it? It's just horrible. So I'm not going to use this and I did dig around and found find a can here and this is uh, International Harvester Red which probably doesn't match this but it's going to be good enough for who it's for. Did you ever hear of Dick Blick art materials? Their motto was Dick Blick ships quick. Now it's DickBlick.com but I bought all my materials from them when I was in my prime doing silk screening on my micrometer teaching aid. Well, that was irrelevant. Now let me take this apart and get it ready. Well, everything is primed with gray primer and it's dry and I'm ready for the finished coat of red. Well, it's a day later and the paint is pretty dry. It's raining out today. I had a clogged tip because of course I'm using an old can of paint that I got at a garage sale and I missed a few spots, but I guess it's good enough. I'm back in the dry basement and although the paint is just a little bit tacky, I'm going to have to wait a little while, but you can see that the match for the jack is fairly close. Actually, on camera, it looks better than what it really is, but it's good enough. All right, I'll assemble all of this, and I don't need to show that. You know, my little crane here actually is Peterbilt, isn't it? I need to paint this plaque, this hood ornament, and I believe that this red here is probably going to be about right, although I think that someone said it was cherry red, maybe even with a metallic. Okay, the crane is mounted on the Bridgeport mill, and uh, let's have a little demonstration to see how it works. Well, that's a 62-pound vise, and it handled it very easily. I'm sure this will handle about 100 pounds. Now, this may seem foolish to you stronger guys and younger guys who could lift that up there just in a matter of two seconds instead of three or four minutes. And I can mount or dismount this from the Bridgeport table in a matter of one minute, two minutes. There's just two bolts there, three-quarter inch with T-bolts that go into the T-slots. The jack has about a four and a half or five inch stroke that gives me a nine or ten inch movement here as far as lifting on the end. Now if I were to make this again and I may modify this, I would like just a little bit more reach right here to center myself over the cart. So I may remake the boom. I have another piece of this steel and I think I'll make it about three, oh, maybe even four inches longer. And I think I would move this pivot point right here just a little bit closer 
to the upright, possibly right about here, which would give me a little bit more lift. Not that I think that I even need it, but those are the two engineering changes that I would make. And I could make the entire new boom within one hour, now that I know how to do it. And this is my dedicated vice cart. Also remember that I have a little bit more versatility here because I can change the length of the chain. I also have about two inches of screw here that you can't even see that will extend out of the jack piston if I would need that. Furthermore, I can raise and lower the entire Bridgeport table to change the elevation of this if I was going to set it on a different cart or a bench or something like that. Let me demonstrate that. And that's how quickly it can be assembled and mounted. That just illustrates that I could move it up and down to put on a cart if the cart or the bench was a little bit lower than the travel of the crane. Well, that concludes the two-part video series on the crane for mounting a vise on the Bridgeport mill. Now there'll be a little extra credit and in that extra credit I'm just going to show you how to find the center of gravity. It's a simple thing. You probably could figure that out yourself. Also at the very end lots of still pictures. I hope you enjoyed the video. I sure had fun building this. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Finding the center of gravity. The brown and sharp vise with the swivel base.